I grew up uh, really properly obsessed with music. I didn't know I was. I thought everyone was the same as me, but I just <laughs> just really reacted to it. From since I can remember, um, there was a lot of jazz played in my house when I was very young. So it was people like Nat King Cole, Lena Horne, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, Mel Torme, Count Basie, you know, um, George Shearing, Tubby Hayes. Uh, so there was a lot of that swirling around, and that never really uh, entered my head, but it certainly entered my consciousness. And then well, by the time I was six, I started listening to pop music, and I just fell in love with it. And it was, it's been an enduring love affair. And Chris? Um, well, uh, music, when I was young, like Glenn, I suppose, it was part of the tapestry of, of, of being in a family, you know, f music was being played the whole time. It was like a, it was like the glue that sort of kept everybody quiet, if you like. Um, my parents had a sort of mixed and varied selection of records that they would listen to, so it was more my brother's influences that I followed. And on one side of the fence, you had one brother who liked the Rolling Stones and Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley. And on the other hand, you had a brother who liked the Beatles and the Searchers and more sort of poppy stuff. Uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers sort of thing. Um, so I was fortunate to have that as a sort of uh, cushion when I was younger. And how did you guys, when did you guys first start playing? Um, well, I, I, I sort of tumbled into playing, uh, I suppose, when I was... 17, 16, 17, I guess, something like that. Um, and I don't really remember how that happened, it just did. It's almost like it fell out of the sky. I don't remember saving up for a guitar or anything, it just appeared. <laughs> <laughs> and and at that stage, were there any, were you sort of ambitious or were you just doing it for fun? I, I think ambition has always been there. I think it's, I think it's really, you know, when I listen to, when I read some of the stuff that um, particularly Glenn and I were working on when we first met, I can read ambition in, and hear ambition in those early demos. Whether they were right, wrong or indifferent, the fact that, the, that there was so much going on in the songs meant that there was a lot of ambition and I think all these years later that's proved to be true. For sure, and, mm. uh, and ambition that's paid off. And Glenn, when did, when did you first start singing? Um, I don't really know. Uh, I suspect I was always singing, um, and I certainly... Uh, um, I got a second-hand piano from an aunt when I was, I think, around about seven. And my elder brother had a guitar which he took up and then pretty much discarded fairly soon afterwards. So that was around and I started playing those things and and pretty soon I could get a tune out of both of those instruments. And I and um, you know, it was a fantastic way to pass the time. I'd get completely lost in it and really enjoy just seeing other people's songs. How how did you guys meet and when when was that? It was in 1973, and I put an advert in a sweet shop window for a guitarist to join a band. I didn't have a band, and I didn't have any of the things that I was sort of p p claiming to, to have. <laughs> and um, luckily, Glenn was the only person to answer the advert, and that's how we came together. So that's yeah, such such like happenstance, and it's, yeah. it's amazing. And, yeah. and, and I mean, that really smacks of ambition. Just you know, going ahead and putting putting up and. And did, did you think you wanted to do music professionally? And yeah, I did. And in those days, the Melody Maker was the place where you would normally have put an ad like that. You know, that was kind of like the the place where you put an advert for somebody to start forming a band with. But I think I was too nervous of doing anything quite as <laughs> quite as mad as, as that. So it seemed like a, a really logical thing to put something locally so that you'd find somebody who was just around the corner from where you lived. Yeah. Proved and to be the case. 
And Glenn, what what made you what made you get in touch? Um, I think there, that that uh, really I was interested in meeting someone else who had the same sort of ideas as I had. It was certainly very attractive the thought of a band there and touring and a, and a record deal. <laughs> <laughs> that might have encouraged me a bit. But, um, <laughs> You know, it was uh, it, it was good. I, I'd already met Jules, and Jules and I were playing together, I think, for a year before I met Chris. But our direction um, wasn't one that was bearing fruit other than musically we clicked together for playing. We, we weren't writing together. Well, when we did, it didn't really work. And um, so I'd been writing on my own, and to meet Chris, and he was writing such great songs already. It was lovely to have someone else to bounce off of, and someone else who, you know, in many respects was far ahead of where I was. Certainly lyrically, he was streets ahead of anything that I'd done, and it was fantastic to meet him. How early did you know? How early on did you guys start writing together? Do you remember the first time you you sat down to write something? <coughs> Yeah, it was pretty quick, it was within the first few months, I think. And is the songwriting process still the same to, today as it was then, or, or is it different for every single song? I think broadly it's the same. I think uh, that we both bring our experience to the table now, which we didn't have. We just had raw enthusiasm and, and ideas, and, and I think we were talented then too, but... Uh, it's a different sort of collaboration now, but it's mired in exactly the same uh, beginnings. And uh, in, ter in terms of your discography, I, I kind of want to start with the latest album. Um, what do you think are the best tracks from it, and where do you where do you think it sort of fits in with your with your earlier work that obviously you know shows up first on Spotify, is on is on any kind of Best of compilation or, or whatever, you know, what has the most plays? Um, what, what what motivates you to keep making music today? You know, we were just having a <coughs> talk about this uh, before we started talking to you, and these days it's hard to find, um, you know, what you're doing a record for other than a pure outlet for creativity you can play to your audience, it's very hard for a record, and I'm not moaning about this, it's just a fact that the time for records really has passed by and large as a cultural thing. The scene has moved on to other areas. Um, but I still very much believe in writing and like, so for, for instance the knowledge I think contains some of the best stuff we've ever done. And it got fantastic reviews. It got great. It got great reviews. And I'm so you know, two and a half years on or whatever it is, I'm so happy with it. I think we explore like lyrically, we explore stuff that we've that we've never done before. Musically, we're going some places we've never been, and I think we've got to. Hopefully, inspiration will take you to places, so you're not just doing stuff you're comfortable with. Do you sort of like bemoan the death of the album? Do you? Do you think that, that, that it's a sad thing that things have become so driven by singles? It's like bemoaning the death of, uh, uh, you know, Zeppelins or something like that. You know, I <laughs> think everything has a time and and uh, and it and it moves on. I think you have to really be strong and sure of why you do what you what you do. And I think if we were in writing and making music strictly for financial purposes we would have probably gone on to something else now <laughs> <laughs> um one area of course of music that i guess is growing or you know stronger than ever is is playing live and you guys play live mm. a lot is this something yeah. that you have kind of grown to enjoy more over the years definitely uh, the last year we've played over 61 shows and wow. um in america and in the uk and and our audiences have grown um, and in some instances they've got younger which is extraordinary for us it's a real thrill to go on stage and see people that, um, that are clearly finding you from a different di 
direction than their parents maybe had found us. So it's a great lift and um, we have an incredible team of people, our band is great, so there's nothing not to like about going on stage and playing your own songs and people like and people enjoying it. It's kind of a communal event and there's a very few of those left these days where people can uh, all feel like you're on the same level and you're enjoying it and it's that's uh, that's that's really sort of the heart and soul of any sort of spiritual spirituality I think yeah I mean more than ever live music can bring people together um, and yeah and so so you mentioned your audience getting mm. in, you know in some instances younger mm. do you hear are there examples of artists um, kind of that have come after you that you hear a bit of your influence in can you because there was there was one that came came to mind today when I was Who's listening to the cats. Um, I mean, it's not in all of your stuff because it is so varied. Yes. Um, but on uh, but cool for cats. I just thought, I wondered uh, how much it would have had a bearing on like Mike Skinner in the streets. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's completely different from mm -hmm. some. You must have influenced lots of other, lots of other um, artists. But are there artists? The artists that have come after you and music that's been made since you first started. Um, who, who, who are some of your favourite people that have kind of come after you? Uh, Sleaford Mods. Uh, I was just about to say really, that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Funny. Oh, oh, great. You know, I just... They're I sharp, aren't they? Oh, yeah, really sharp, really great lyrics, brilliant mm. delivery, um, you know, interesting, uh, you know, really stripped-back raw music. I love them. Mm. Um... I'm a big fan of Kate Tempest. Um, she's been an amazing influence on me, as as weirdly enough has Stormzy, because it's taken me a while to process what those people bring to my world. What they bring to my world is uh, is their honesty and their ability to look at situations and humour as well. Humour is just so great with, with all the three people I've mentioned, and. What I take from them is, well, what we do would never be like any of those people, but I take from them what I want to bring back into Squeeze World and make it into a squeezed way of addressing things like that. And I think that's such a valuable thing to have all the way along throughout our career. There have been different people that cropped up and have done that for us. And uh, it, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Really. Mm. And when you're talking about humour, this is something that must be... Um, well, I don't know whether you find it challenging as a lyric writer, but I can imagine it being so. Um, it's like incorporating humour into your songs and into your lyrics, which you do brilliantly, but without it becoming totally like, you know, all your songs are just like comedy. Mm. Um, you know, is there a line that you, that you, that you look for with that? Um, or is it just, just something that the lyric writing comes completely instinctively to you? Um. I, 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 th I think probably the best songs come to you rather than you going looking for them sometimes because um, you can over investigate um, what you what you need to say I think when speaking for myself when I'm sitting down if I'm looking for an idea it I'm kind of waiting for it to come to the table um, and then sometimes I'm given the idea before sitting down, and then and then I have to investigate it. And I think the humour is is important because, um, in some instances, I think that's charming, and uh, that's what I've grown up with. You know, my my dad was a very witty man, um, and um, I kind of take a bit of that from him and. You know, I think um, with you know, you don't want it to be too Benny Hill. Let's face it, but but it's quite nice to have a bit of a bit of a wry look at things, whatever it it is. But then there is also a lot of seriousness to what we do as well, as you will discover on, like you say, the last album on the on the on knowledge. Yeah, and and I mean, th throughout mm. your catalogue, like it, it varies completely. But yeah, it does. It's really it's really nice to have have that kind of mm. yeah it's very british i guess is yeah i guess it is describing it but yeah. you obviously managed to connect with american and other audiences as well but 
there's something very marvellously British about it. Thank you. <laughs> um, you so wear bowler hats on stage. <laughs> um, so the so the um, late seventies was when you start first started being, you know, really successful. Um, did did you did you find it kind of pressurised because you were being compared to Lennon and McCartney around that time? Um, did you find that difficult to, to deal with, kind of fame and success? Um, I didn't think so at the time, but the more I look back on it, the, the more I would answer yes, <laughs> because uh, it's everything that you hope for, but still, it's like, I guess the first time someone jumps out of a plane with a parachute on their back, you think you know what to expect, and then it is actually something, probably that plus other stuff that you weren't um, prepared for. Particularly, you know, we were successful, I was successful from when I was 20. And that's quite young to process stuff, I think. But, yeah. I'll, you know, would I have it any other way? Probably a little bit, but not much. <laughs> 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 and on, on, on the sort of road to achieving that breakthrough, um, how much did you guys play live before you, you made it big? And um, what was your most challenging moment um, on the road? To, well, to we've always been a live thing? band. I mean, as soon as we got together as a band, we were taking offers in local pubs and, you know, we, we would literally just play to like three people just to play as a band. Because when you're cutting your teeth, there's nothing better than having a small audience to see if songs work, in partic particular as a pub up the road where we used to play three or four times a week, you know, and mostly to our mates <laughs> um, and for beer. But it was so important to do that because we learned so much about ourselves subconsciously, I believe, that that created our craft moving forward. And I don't think there's ever been a time when we've, you know, made a record maybe once or twice where where we haven't sort of concentrated on going on the road because that's what we do. You know, we're a, we're a live band um, as much as a recording band, and uh, you know that's testament to it. Is the last year of of work really? It's extraordinary. Yeah, it's a lot a, a lot of shows to be playing. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe somebody's documented it. I don't know. <laughs> well, One of our fans, I suspect. <laughs> Um, so I've got two final questions for you. Yeah. Um, what are your favourite kind of lesser known tracks and deep cuts from your catalogue? And uh, the second question is who are, your, who are your greatest artists of all time, if you can even narrow them down? <laughs> wow. Um, I'm going to go with uh, like a favourite deep cut would be uh, uh, Big Bang from uh, Cozy Fantage Fruity, although not the actual recorded version, it's a version we've done live, um, which is, uh, it feels like one of the most modern songs we've ever done. And I love the lyric, I absolutely adore the lyric, the lyric is absolutely right from day one, the tune took a little bit more sorting out. Um, well, last week I was in my car and I was listening to our album Play, which I do from time to time. And the, the, the track off that, which always catapults me into a, um, a deep emotion, is a song called Letting Go. When the, when the chorus comes in, there is, it's just so brilliant. The musical rise from the verse into the chorus I can't even describe it I couldn't name you the chords or anything but it's just that what they, what it does emotionally to you is so brilliant and then what I realized about listening to it was the end of the song is even more powerful than the song itself it builds into a place which is almost like a meditation of the feeling of the lyric which is genius Wow. Uh, I'm looking forward to listening to it mm -hmm. And who are your favourite artists of all time? Um, if you can, you know, narrow them down to a few. Cause, mm. I mean, I guess as you guys are music obsessives, so people have found it pretty hard. Yeah, that's a hard question. <laughs> um, I have to say um, that it's the Beatles, because 
I know it's an old school thing to say, but the amount of ground they covered mm. in the time they were together, I don't think anyone else in any music since the 60s has ever done, has changed so rapidly. But at the same time, there's a progression you can see through all their records. And they had a phenomenal workload and three really talented writers in the same band, which is unusual enough <coughs> by itself. <coughs> and their legacy lives on uh, now. And uh, I think there are people that are still discovering them and still discovering the talent that was in their songwriting. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Difficult to follow that one, I'm afraid. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... You know. uh, I, I still think, yeah, pe people are discovering and kind of seem so obvious to us, but kind of discovering why people are talking so much about them. Mm. Um, there was that whole thing on Twitter where people were like, who's Paul McCartney? <laughs> right. <laughs> a couple of years ago. <coughs> he was on a Kanye West record, but I think people quickly cottoned on to who he was. So, yeah. I mean, it's, oh, it's a right, very obvious, yeah, of course. That's really a very, Yeah, it uh, seemed mind-boggling, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, guys. It was really thank good you for your to talk time. To you. Thank you so God much. God bless. Good luck with this.